Parts, The Clonus Horror, 1979, directed by Robert S. Fiveson, starring Tim Donnelly, Dick Sargent, and Paulette Breen. A young man that lives in an isolated colony makes a disturbing discovery. Him and all of his friends are actually clones bred to stock an organ farm for the rich and famous. Can the covert organization be stopped, or are they doomed to join the others in storage? This film was recommended by a fan. Thanks for the suggestion. If the plot sounds familiar, that's because it is. The creators of the film successfully took DreamWorks to court for copyright infringement due to its unquestionable similarities with Michael Bay's The Island. They settled out of court with the amount rumored to be in the seven-figure range. What impressed me about this film was how seriously it handled the subject matter when it easily could have gone for a more sensational route. This film makes you ponder the very real ethical dilemmas that cloning can present, the hallmark of well-written sci-fi. The cast delivers some standout performances in this film. With Tim Donnelly effectively carrying the film as a naive clone, Jeff Knight representing an immoral member of the opportunistic elite, Keenan Wynn playing the retired journalist who felt it was his duty to expose the truth after stumbling upon it, and Dick Sargent, of bewitched fame, really dialing up the deviance as the fiendish Dr. Jameson. Fans of Stuart Gordon and David Cronenberg will find this one tremendously tame. But the scene where Richard makes the discovery of the ghoulish fate of his clone brethren is eerie and features a skin complexion that could make George Romero blush. I was initially disappointed that the film wasn't ultimately about the wealthy transferring their brains into younger versions of themselves, but the film aimed to be far more grounded and restrained, and was more grotesque because of this plausibility and restraint. This film won a Saturn Award for Best Film Produced for Under $500,000. Strangely, the unmistakable red alert sound from the original Star Trek series is used in this film at about 45 minutes in. Now, none of the unestablished cast or crew necessarily went on to have prolific careers after this film, but the film itself has developed a bit of a cult following and was even featured in an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000 in 1997. A verdict? Recommended. A shoestring yet satisfactory cerebral production. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi or horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling low-budget adventure.